Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Bite Size Talk. I'm happy to um, introduce to you uh, Julia and Nicolas, and they're going to talk about NF validation. So I'm handing over now uh, to, to you, Julia. Thank you. So hello, everyone. Um, we're going to explain this new plugin that we implemented in Nextflow. It's called NF validation, and we use it for Padlam parameter validation and for this we use a uh, JSON schema. So first of all, before starting, why is it important to validate parameters? Um, so you may know that Nextflow pipelines can accept different parameters um, either through command line or through all the config files. And this is not validated by Nextflow. So if, for example, your pipeline expects a string and the user provides a number, all your pipeline will run until this value is used and then it will fail. So um, that's why it's important to have some preview steps to validate parameters and avoid possible errors. This um, in NF core was already implemented um, using this uh, JSON schema. And actually all the all NF core pipelines have um, these validation steps. And in the template, because if as a pipeline development developer, you would have to validate these things manually, it would be a huge um, chunk of code. And yeah, and so that's uh, we use JSON schemas, as I said, and this JSON schema um, looks something like that. Um, and here you can have all your like you describe all the parameters of your pipeline. It has um, some formatting. And then under these um, definitions, we have groups because you can organize your parameters by, for example, input parameters and then at least like organize them in different groups. And then inside properties you have, for example, in this case, foo, which should be string or bar, which should be string. Um, this is like this file can get very long. So the advice is to never um, edit it by hand. Um, so in NFCore, I think there's another bite size talk about that. But in NFCore, you have this common NFCore schema build, which will open um, a web um, tooling, um, which helps edit this JSON file. Uh, this JSON schema and it's like a drop, uh, drag and drop. So it's very easy to edit it and you don't need to be careful with the formatting and so on. And then another thing that is new from this, uh, this plugin is that you can also, so this JSON schema can be used for different, different things. For example, we also use it in NFCore website, but it can also validate other kind of, of um, files, for example, sample sheets, which we usually they are used in pipelines to provide inputs. Um, so it's usually a CSV or DSV file and where you have your sample ID. And if you provide files, the, you can have um, each column providing one file and maybe some metadata from samples or things like that. Um, so you can also have a sample sheet, uh, sorry, a JSON schema to validate this sample sheet. Um, the format is more or less um, more or less the same as the as the one that I already showed. And um, the structure um, where every so you have it's tiny bit different, but you also have properties, and inside properties you would have the name of um, each column. In your, in your CSV or TSV, and it can also validate YAML files. So in this case, you will have the name of every entry. And then you can also have type, and you can validate different things. Like, for example, in the case of um, being a string, um, you will validate that the provided value is a string, or you can also provide a pattern if it has to end with dot faster or things like that. 
Sorry. Okay, so we'll go now. It, this was a little bit fast, but um, so I think we have other bite sides about JSON schema, which are uh, more in, in detail. But for um, for time now, um, I'm gonna talk about the NF validation, the plugin itself. So this plugin takes all the code that it was started in NF Core. So if you um, if you have um, checked the the NF Core template at some point, this is how the pipeline template looks. And you have here a lib directory, and then here we store some Groovy code. And for example, this file is the one that validates um, next flow parameters. So this was um, uh, was taken from from here from the NF Core template, and based on that, we start, started the develop, uh, development of this plugin. Um, so how to use it um, is very easy. Like all Nextflow pipelines work, you can add. Uh, in your nextflow.config, these um, plugins, and then you add the name of the plugin you want to use and uh, the latest version. With this, that's all what you need. Then this will be installed with your with your nextflow. And then in this case, it contains different functions that can be imported in your main.nf or in your nextflow script and you only need to use include the name of the function that then you can use in your script and from plugin NF validation. Then these functions we have here, we have um, different ones. And so I will quickly go through them. Um, as a kind of summary, we have uh, params help, which is used to print the help message for a pipeline. So just to show. Okay, so you would use um, uh, now I'm using launch.sh because the last latest latest version is not released. So that's running my, my local copy, but usually it would be Nextflow run. And then if you have this in your Nextflow dog config, you don't need it anymore. The name of your pipeline. And then we can run help. This uses a JSON schema that I talked about to print um, the help message of, of the pipeline. Okay, doing something wrong. <laughs> Well, if it's not working, yes, perfect. Um, yeah, so here you see the help, mes um, help message with the usual command and then the parameters. Uh, those are the sections where they are organized. And then you see the, the name and some description, also the um, type of value. Then we also have param summary log on param summary map these two work very very similar and they are used to print so usually if you when you run a pipeline um in nf core at least we we print a summary of the parameters that change from the default at the beginning of every of every run in case um, a user needs to check um, what they provided um, this is generated with this function, param summary log, which provides this uh, list of parameters in text format. 
And Bram Summary Map uh, works exactly the same, but instead of returning a text format, it returns a map. And then we also have validate parameters, which is maybe the most important here, which is the one that does the actual validation of the parameters. So in your in your main DNF, you can use the function the function validate parameters. And um and then this um if you if you use this function before starting the execution of the workflow, it it will fail in case there's some error uh, before um, starting all the execution. And for example, here it says your your, param your the, the parameter that you provided called input. Um, it's sample sheet text and it doesn't match the pattern CSV, DSV, or YAM. And also it's a file that doesn't exist. It's also validating that this file should exist. So I'm gonna show as an example how how this looks um, sorry. so that's the um, the current template without using the plugin that we have in nf core and as you see we use this um um this chunk of code which is initializing and also validating all the parameters and then here i have the same template but modified in order to use uh, to use the plugin. So here I imported the functions and instead of um, so before I had this initialized which was um, using all the code inside lib. In this case this has been modified and we don't have any more the, the and of course schema.groovy and I have the code to print a help message and here the function to validate parameters. So if I run this pipeline again, uh, the test, for example, it should validate all the parameters. And now we will see first the summary of parameters that I mentioned before. Okay, so as you see, because I didn't provide the outdoor parameters, which is required, I get this error before starting any execution. So now I provide this parameter. Um, yes, so that's the description of the parameters that are different from the default. For example, you can see which input file um, you provided. And then now the validation passed and our pipeline started. Good. So, and then the um, last function that we have is from sample sheet which is creating uh is reading the sample sheet the input sample sheet and creating a channel and i will leave this for um for the end because uh, nicholas worked on that so he will explain about this also this thing um so that that's also a new thing that we have now with this plugin you can have schemas inside schemas. What does this mean? Is that in your original Nextflow schema file for every um, parameter, which is a file, you can have this new key called schema. And this one references to a path of another JSON schema. In this case is a JSON schema, which will validate the, um, the input. Um, sample sheet and this will also now you'll see it when Nicholas explains more in detail but 
So it's automatically whenever it detects that there's a this schema key in a parameter, it will try to read the file provided by this parameter and then validate it using this this JSON schema. And I also have a different example here for RNA seq. If we see the main code, and that's exactly the same that I showed before, where I import the functions. Um, also bring the help message and validate parameters. And RNA-seq was the first, uh, one of the first pipelines that got this, um, this input schema. It was just like a proof of concept. And that this is um, pretty old, like um, we started implementing this some time ago. And now we have it implemented with a plugin so all pipelines can use it. And so basically here you have the columns of your sample sheet. In this case, sample ID, FASTQ1, FASTQ2, and strandedness. So this will automatically validate um, the content of the input. And if I go... Okay. Um, I was going to try to run this pipeline, but maybe I'm talking too much <laughs> and it's a bit long. So that's it, that you know that you can now automatically validate. And that's what works for sample sheets, but also for any other kind of TSB, CSV, or YAML file that you would like to validate. It doesn't have to be the input uh, specifically. It will validate any of these files. Yeah, so now I will hand over to Nicolas if he wants to show this from sample sheet. Yes, let me share my screen. Okay, so I'm going to show you a, a real quick example of how to use the from sample sheet function. Um, as you can see, I have a simple pipeline here, which um, validates parameters and then converts the uh, input parameter sample sheet to channel. I'm going to, going to run it real quick. As you can see, I also use the Lonzo shell um, bash script because the version is not released yet. So if I'm running this, you can see I get some outputs, which is the channel input. This output has been made from the sample sheet CSV. As you can see, it has the name, surname, the likes, and pictures from certain persons. For example, the first line, Harry Potter, uh, the pa full path to a text file, which has his likes in it, and a full path to a directory, which has pictures in it, which correspond to his likes. Um, I use this sample sheet to validate the uh, this schema to validate the sample sheet. As you can see, um, all all properties are inside of an items uh, section. And you can see the name, surname, a hidden ID number, which isn't in the sample sheet, but you see um, if it isn't in the sample sheet, it will automatically uh, go to nil. Um, then it has the likes, which uh, has a format file path and it checks if the file exists and also pictures, which is directory, which also contains the key dependent required. So if likes is not given, but pictures is given, the sample sheet validation will fail. I'll show an example of this. So for example, if I remove Harry Potter's likes and rerun the codes, you'll see an error which says that the likes fields should be defined when pictures is specified. And then it also shows which uh, fields are not defined because you can also add way more fields to it. And uh, yeah, I think it's a very nice error message. Um, you can also specify the unique, which will um, can take a Boolean or a list. Um, if it's Boolean, it will only look at the field itself. So it, all names should be unique if it's true. Um, if you give a list with, for example, surname, all uh, fields should be unique uh, together with the surname. So for example, I can't specify Harry Potter twice. Can see this. Oh yeah, it also gives the error for the likes fields, which is not 
specified that you, as you can see the combination of name that field surname needs to be unique and you see which uh, combination is the one that clashes with the not being unique um okay so this is a, a real small example of how the from sample sheet works um one small thing uh, to note is that the unique and dependent required field uh, parameters actually only validate if you run the from sample sheet because these are specific for the sample sheet conversion and uh, won't uh, be validated using validate parameters all the other uh, all the other schema fields will be validated using validate parameters one other nice thing um, with from sample sheet is that it will create meta fields which are immutable from the start so I have a bit of code here to show you this. So if I try to change the name of every character to Voldemort, it will fail because it cannot, it cannot uh, change the value in a meta field. Oh, of course, I have to make sure my sample sheet passes first. So as you can see, cannot put items into an immutable map. This can cause problems though in some pipelines which are already built around this concept. Um, so you can disable it using the optional key immutable meta by defining false. The default of this is, is true, as you can see. If I define this and run it again, I will be able to change the name of every character to Voldemort. Or it should do that. Apparently it does not. Um, I don't know why. You can also do it with a parameter. Let's see if that works. It does not work. <laughs> um, okay, so normally that should work. I think I made a typo somewhere or something. Um, you can find this all in the documentation of a, a validation plugin. Um, okay, and you can also uh, specify uh, from default, this from sample sheet function will um, go to the assets schema input.json schema file to convert the sample sheet to a channel, which can also specify which uh, schema to use by using schema, then path to schema. It's a bit weird that it's not working. So I'll try it again. Yeah, okay. Um weird. <laughs> um yeah, that's it for the from sample sheets conversion. Um yeah, any questions? Thank you very much. Um, you so go ahead. <laughs> just wanted to share the last last slide. Ooh, um I'm so sorry. No, no, it's fine. And just to share the point. What am I sharing now? Uh, so just a quick thanks to Phil and Kevin. Kevin started this um, this code in NFCore, and also to everyone who on, on NFCore who contributed to this, either by testing or reviewing documentation, especially. And yeah, that just to share some important links that you may want to check. So the repo of NF validation is in Nextflow. And here you have this documentation that I have been also using. Um, it's a very nice documentation and pretty extensive. Um, also, we have this Slack channel, which is shared in NFCore and Nextflow called NF Validation. And also last thing to mention is that this will be coming soon in NFCore template in the next release um the parameter validation and also optional um not mandatory but optional obtaining this input channel from with from sample sheet and i think that's everything thank you thank you again uh there was someone who had a question i think uh who wanted to join but uh you can now um unmute yourself also um start the video if you if you have a question Hi, um, thank you for this presentation. It's very nice. Uh, I was wondering, Julia, 
uh, will you be adding a schema build command for the sample sheet too? Uh, a schema? What? Sorry, can you say it again? Uh, and, and of course, schema build command for the sample sheet. Ah, okay. Yes, exactly. That's not existing right now. So now we have this tooling um, to create the next flow sample sheet for parameters. Uh, sorry, the next flow schema for parameters, but not for sample sheets. Uh, yeah. There's the plan to add it and highly probable to move all this tooling out of NF Core and make it also as a standalone. Um, but I guess I can't estimate a date because <laughs> that's quite a bit of work. So we'll see. All right, thank you. Uh, are there any more questions from the audience? It doesn't seem so. In that case, I would like to thank uh, both of you and, of course, the audience for listening. And as usual, the Jan Zuckerberg Initiative for funding our bite sized talks. And um, just a very small thing this will be the last bite sized talk before our summer break. And uh, we will let you know when we commence after summer. So thank you very much, everyone. <laughs>